Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, firstly, we hope you're all continuing to uh, stay safe and healthy. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to join our webinar today, where we're going to be discussing all about uh, marketing and branding and how to build your resilience in times of crisis. Um, we're going to look at different, uh, the different risks that brands are facing right now, and also then the pivots that they can make um, which can help them build that resilience. And then we'll kind of wrap up and discuss uh, key points around the uh, next steps for when things eventually uh, do return to normal, because there's certainly no rule book for most of us at the moment. Um, <clears throat> but fear not, we've uh, assembled a team of uh, experts here today who are going to kind of share their insights and knowledge um, on what they're seeing out there in the market and what's working. Um, and also they'll be leveraging some of their, their experience. I'll introduce them very shortly, um, but first, uh, just run through some housekeeping rules. Um, we kind of wanted to make today very interactive, so we're going to have some polls that we'll be running um, throughout the, the course of the webinar. So we encourage you to participate. They'll be real time, so you'll be given uh, 30 seconds to vote or submit an answer, and then we will uh, address those as we move through the discussion. Um, so we hope that kind of gives it a bit of a different twist than, than the uh, endless PowerPoint approach. So um, as I said, first, we're going to start off by discussing the risks. But I'd really like to just take a few minutes to introduce you to our panelists. First of all, we have uh, Ken Lerona, who has over 20 years experience in marketing, brand, and communication. Uh, he's a pre professional who's practicing in the Philippines. And he has a special interest in brand management, public relations, media, customer relations, and entrepreneurship. Um, and I think that uh, one of Ken's key beliefs is people are the central uh, to brand. So we look forward to hearing Ken's insights in very shortly. Um, then we're joined by Amanda Al Jasmi. She's the country manager for Insider Philippines. I've actually worked um, with Amanda on some projects, so I know she knows her stuff. I look forward to hearing uh, what value she can add for, for everyone today. And then last, but by no means least, we have Kara. Um, Flores. Uh, Kara is the marketing communications team leader for YoYo -Yo Philippines and she kind of oversees everything calm, social media um, related from there and she's uh, the, the owner for their overall calm strategy. Um, hi guys, how are you doing? Hello Rich, doing good. Hi, how are you Amanda? Hi Rich. Hi, how are we all? Is this your, is this your first webinar? Uh, or have you guys been kind of doing the circuit the last couple of weeks? In Insider, we've been very active in doing webinars. So I think this would be our third one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. Sorry, I kind of the wrong way. Um, I think I just gave an introduction, unless you guys don't have anything to add. I think um, a good way for, for the audience to get to kind of know us all a bit better would be for us to discuss um, some good examples of, of companies or brands who we think have been doing uh, a good job so far uh, throughout the current pandemic. So Amanda, would you like to get started? Maybe you have someone you'd like to reference. Sure, thank you. Thank you so much, Rich. First of all, I want to say thank you to you guys, to KMC, for, for this opportunity for us to speak. So um, when it comes to like poster child or brand resilience, uh, the first um, brand that comes to my mind when it comes to global brands would be how Slack and Zara mm -hmm. are actually doing things. Like for example, for Slack, now they are they are providing free upgrades to free plans, especially to those who are like from the health industry or from the pharma industry, which is really helpful when it comes to engage, engaging to each other. And Zara is also opening up their like their um factories. So now they are converting it to create like PPEs. But here locally in the Philippines, I would say like brands like SM, Jollibee Food Corporation. So they are, they are giving away hundreds of, mil hundreds of millions in order to kind of like um, help the frontliners and also help, help the government in, in doing the research for, for the cure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I think, I think every brand has uh, something different they can bring to the table, but it's, it's amazing to see that there's that solidarity and, and most are being as proactive as they can right so um, that's, that's always good to see um how about you cara yeah that's right i agree with amanda as well it's really fascinating to see how the bayanihan yeah. was given birth during the crisis um 
of course, there are the global brands, but there are also lots of small entrepreneurs or small brands that are very proactive in terms of driving fundraisers. Mm -hmm. Anybody caught your eye in particular? Oh, there's so many. Uh, See, for example, there are Lazada, e-commerce, Globe, and then there's different restaurants that are already pushing for free food for our frontliners and, of course, to donate to the communities who are in dire need of food and medical uh, solutions, especially. And it's not stopping anytime soon. Actually, it just started a couple of weeks ago, not at the beginning of the crisis, but you can see that it's on the rise. And I'm really mm-hmm. happy to see such spirit of by any hand. Uh, one particular brand that caught my attention was Poison Paint Philippines. So they mm-hmm. are now in partnership with DPWH and BDCDA. Um, they are converting public facilities to emergency quarantine facilities, which will definitely help us in the future in you know, containing the virus. Yeah, whatever that may look like. Uh, mm-hmm. hopefully, hopefully we might get some insights on that today. Um, lastly, Ken, anybody who has stood out to you in kind of your scanning of the market in the last few weeks? Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm really so amazed with how these two major brands um, that have played uh, uh, within this, this, this situation that we currently have. One of them is a, I, I'm a big fan of, um, Ankas. They're actually very, 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 very brave. Um, they were very quick at pivoting their service from the ride hailing model to food delivery model to essential goods um, delivery model. I guess um, it's it's one big stake that they took and I think um, they're very successful in that and they have earned a lot of prices from the market. They earned a lot of love from, from their customers and even with their writer partners. So Ancas is one very big, brave brand during this time of crisis. And also another one, a uh, local brand, which is actually a, a household name. And you wouldn't even really think that they will stand up and, you know, make such bold statements during this time of crisis. It's Ligo Sardines. And, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, you know, a very simple... How, how so, yeah. Yeah, a very simple product, a very simple brand. But then they're um, using a lot of marketing power to bring out the message and actually with all the efforts that they're doing, personally, I can see people um, in, in, in the gro- grocery stores or even in the social media, you know, talking about Ligo and, and, and putting that brand specifically into their um, um, baskets. So the, the effect of their bravery actually is translating into um, brand love, translating into actual purchases of the customers. So. I think right, those, are the two brands. Mm-hmm. those are the yeah. two brands that are, to me, um, poster boys of, of, of what we are going through right now. Yeah, good. Right. I guess, I guess they're, all, they're all being responsive, which is the key thing, right? And I, I think we'll, we'll elaborate on some of that uh, very soon as well. Um, yeah, I think we have an interesting uh, stat to show next, which maybe probably illustrates how important uh, different brands are right now. So. This is from the, um, I'm just waiting till it goes up there. Yeah, so there everyone should be able to see that. It's from the McCann Truth Central uh, from a very recent study, which was just conducted maybe about two weeks ago. It says 88% of Filipinos are trusting brands uh, twice as much as they trust the government right now. Um, and I think that's largely to do with the part where we see a lot of different brands have been able to probably uh, grow compared to others. So anything that's online, um, like food delivery services, and I think uh, seeing different businesses switch their models and kind of maybe make their their brand more uh, relevant or try to be as relevant as possible, obviously, so that they can they can keep on going has been has been really interesting. Um, so maybe we'll we'll bear that in mind as as we kind of talk about the risks, which is is what we're going to move on to next. Um, so. I guess as a brand, uh, we'll start this one, I think, with, um, we're going to go to Ken first. What, what do you think is like the biggest risk that, that a company or a brand uh, could do uh, or not do, I guess? What's, what's the no-nos right now? Yeah, uh, what I observed during the first week of um, the ECQ and this crisis is that the brands were really rushing and jumping into 
into the, 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 the pool and saying, hey, oh, we're here, we're making noise. Mm. And it actually just added so much um, clutter in the, and confusion in, in the market, in, in, in the airwaves. It was actually very dangerous because without calibrating the message, without calibrating the timing, and without you know, um, really focusing on what's needed and what value the customer needs from you, you're just creating noise. You're just adding to, to the confusion. And that is the risk that your, um, your, your brand can make can 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 you know uh, face if you don't stop look and listen. So mm. to me, basically, um, what is important is that we be sensitive um, during this time of crisis. Whatever our brand communicates, whenever our brand communicate, um, that's really important to consider. Uh, the risk, actually, one fear that people are saying: if your brand keeps quiet during this this time of crisis, you'll be lost and forgotten. Yes, that's correct, but always remember to be on the right timing and to say the right words when you communicate to your market. So that's it for, for my side, um, Rich. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I think, obviously there's a lot that can be said and there's a lot, like you said, a lot of noise out there. So it's probably finding that right message and then obviously the right channel, uh, depending upon, upon who you want to talk to. Um, I know in KMC, our approach has been very uh, transparent. So um, we've been like actively communicating with our clients in the form of uh, emails, of course, but then also uh, very much a, a human approach too. So making sure that we're, we're addressing all concerns and being as flexible as we possibly can. Um, that's on the client side. Um, and then I guess internally, you know, we've kind of launched new channels like news pods and things that we didn't necessarily have before so that we can get the messages to our employees uh, as quickly as possible because obviously a lot of people have questions that, that need to be answered. So, um, yeah, I think you're dead right. It's all about the, the right message and, and the right timing. Um, how about you, Amanda? What, what would your opinion be? Well, for me, I think two most important things right now is to be very transparent and to be very sincere when you're talking to your, to your consumers or to your end users, right? So now is not the time to like pretend that everything is okay. So mm -hmm. as as you, as you can see, even enterprise companies like CEOs are tweeting, they are sending out messages and all of that that stuff to let people mm -hmm. know where they are and what they are doing. So now when it comes to like um the risk that brands will be will not should not do, it would be to, you know, not be very honest and not be transparent to your to your yeah. audience. Yeah. Anybody any brand that you would kind of um point out who's who like has done something that's totally maybe like off brand for them to the point where they've been maybe more transparent than they would than they would have been before. Right. I, I don't want to name names right now because it might put me <laughs> put me in hot water. But but we all know that, especially here in the Philippines, right? We um like social media is like what Ken mentioned, super noisy. And like yeah, yeah, the biggest users of social media in the world. I think it's <laughs> from the eight hours a day on Facebook uh, last time I read from from Hootsuite. That's right. That's right. So um, also another thing that I want to add to that is to make sure that like with whatever data that you're sharing as a brand, make sure that it is correct. And that so you won't be able to like, um, like create panic and havoc because lots of fake news are also going around in social yeah. media. Yeah, definitely getting that credible news. On the subject of data, do you think like all data, because I know you're, you're a data lady, right? So you're what you do is heavily uh, steep in data and metrics. Um, do you think all the, all the guidelines have gone out the window now? Um, like, are you seeing any shifts or do you think it's still too early to tell? Like a lot of people, um, particularly when it comes to brand, it can be, it can be quite hard to measure. But, but what would your insights on that be? How, how maybe people can adjust um, whilst also keeping a track of the, the effect their, their efforts are having? Right. Um, I think right now people are still very like, um, especially like tech brands, they are very focused on, st on data privacy and they are being more sensitive right now when it mm -hmm. comes to like sending messages or sending any type of communication. Because um, just one wrong move right now, like you can lose your, your people or your subscribers or people can opt out. So I think um, based from our experience, the brands that we are working with are more sensitive when it comes to like data privacy and data protection. Okay, very good. Um, then how about you, Kara? Um, what would you kind of pinpoint as being the biggest risk for brands right now? 
during the COVID. So I what was build the on to doing? what Ken and Amanda have said. Yes, I think the biggest risk that any brand could do right now during the crisis is to communicate false information, false hope, false positivity. So there's also, <laughs> right? Because It's not all it, rainbows and butterflies right now. That's before. true. We are in chaos already. We don't need any of those confusing facts anymore. It's hard to focus at it as it is. So one way we can help really is just, you know, to ground them to the truth. And don't be afraid to, uh, similarly to do not be afraid to take risks, is do not be afraid to be vulnerable in front of your audience or your market. Because I think especially during this tire, uh, trying time, people or your audience would appreciate if you are true to them. To kind of like say that we understand what you're going through, we are also going through what you're going through, and we are going to find solutions to this together. Yeah, so being authentic, probably. Uh, yeah, it's funny, I I've seen that too. I think we've probably never issued as many comms uh, across the whole community, as we call it at KMC, whether it's to um, employees, partners, um, clients right so weirdly it kind of feels like um as a result we're actually like a little bit closer together so mm -hmm. it's been quite interesting to see that as well um so i think what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a poll this is an open-ended question to get started with um it should be on the screen there now in a second so the question is what has been the biggest risk uh for your brand during covid so this is open to the audience you can now uh, use a chat function and you can Take 30 seconds to post any questions you may have, and then um, we can we can discuss them amongst ourselves. Or if you have somebody on the panel who you would really like to hear from, uh, just drop their name in at the end so we can make sure that it gets addressed. So uh, we'll let you take your 30 seconds now. Okay, we have the first one. Okay. I think, Pat, you're going to call out some of the questions. Pat? Go here. Sorry, I'm on my cell phone. Um, so I guess the first question is um, around, I guess, misconceptions. So people are, are, are making assumptions. Um, it's come in here that from, from Mia Malores is, is saying that for people to think that we will not be able to, live, to deliver to our global clients because we cannot go to work physically. So um, does anybody want to kind of add some insights on that? So I think She's saying that maybe it's um, it can reflect badly on the Philippines that you know, essentially people are, are thinking that nobody's at work, so that you know the offices are closed. But uh, I think it's actually much. Uh, it couldn't be any different from what I'm seeing um, with our own team here in KMC. We're all very much online from home, um, and I, I know a lot of other businesses are too. So does anyone want to pick up on that? Yeah, I guess um, I'll take that question, Rich. Um, okay. I guess the, the, the world is actually on a standstill right now, and the world will, in fact, understand if um, productivity is reduced, um, service is limited. So I think the market is, is, is more forgiving um, at yeah. this point. So there should be no worries. As you said earlier, you just have, the brands just need to be very transparent in terms of the limitations that they currently have um, so that when you communicate to your customers, you tell them, hey, um, uh, we actually don't, don't, don't have operations right now or we're in a skeleton level of operations. So they will be more forgiving to you. Um, it's okay to show your vulnerability to your customers. They will totally understand um, your situation. Yeah, I guess I guess we're all kind of in this together, and, and not mm -hmm. just in the Philippines, but um, we're all at very varying stages of um, of quarantine across the globe. So I think uh, as it progresses, more and more people are kind of becoming understanding of, of everyone else's 
predicament as well. Um, Kara or Amanda, do you guys have anything to add there? Yeah, I just want to add to to what Ken was saying. Actually, even prior to COVID, right? Um, global brands actually think that Filipinos are doing really well, even if we are working from home, because mm. uh, we do have lots of outsourced business here. So, yeah. so yeah. On the contrary, actually, when when I speak to like um foreign counterparts, they actually say that like the the way that Filipinos are working is really good, because you know even without supervision or anything, they know that we deliver. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's very good as well. Um, I see another interesting question, uh, which I think a lot of people would like answered is like, how can you make your uh, brand relevant right now, despite not knowing what's coming next, right? So there's, there's a lot of uncertainties. Um, for example, just to tie it in with some of the other questions, like people may have scheduled or had scheduled like product launches. Um, you know, obviously it's affected uh, certain kind of brand touch points more than others, i.e. Ev like events uh, and gatherings. So, so what would your advice be to them on kind of how to re-strategize and uh, realign for, for what's to come next? Because even though uh, the quarantine is due to end quite soon, I don't think things are going to go uh, back to normal as, as they were prior to, uh, prior to the pandemic. Kara, maybe? I think that, yes. One of the one of the ways brands can actually be relevant now is to be just present. See, for example, we don't know when this is going to end because the the lockdown keeps on extending. But as it is, do not think super far ahead of the future. Just think of what you can do in the next week, or today even, or what can you do in the next month. Uh, with that, there is more sense of focus on what you can service to your audience or what the people need right now. It's not looking far ahead as to, okay, so of course there are long-term plans that needed to be, you know, needed to be planned. But as it is, I think taking it day by day or just, you know, just read it. As we mentioned, it's an opportunity to step back and really listen to what your audience needs. So just you know, think of the next day, think of the next week, of the next month and start there yeah i mean it really probably depends on the industry the product and mm -hmm. and what your plans were i guess to begin with but probably um obviously we're seeing a lot of uh brands are going digital whilst maybe they wouldn't have before so i think that's a a safe bet moving forward to to incorporate online and digital um channels and tools as much as, as possible right so uh that's definitely an insight there um Amanda, would you? Have, I'm sure you'd have some insights to add there. Yeah, correct. Thank you, Rich. So, um, like, just just to add to what you guys are saying. So, this is the new normal. Like, we can't use the strategy that we had like four or five months ago. So, we need to re-strategize. We need to adapt to the changes, and we need to like, um, use new tools to be able to to communicate what we want to communicate to our to our users. So, there are lots mm -hmm. of of new technologies right now. And um, I know that you guys are also experiencing this, that even legacy brands are venturing into e-commerce, into digital, because that's the only way to go. So I think like the biggest thing here is for our brand to still be relevant is to adapt to the change because it will never be the same again. Yeah, I mean, hopefully like some sense of normality will come mm -hmm. back, but yeah, definitely different. I think, you know, there's been advantages for some and also disadvantages as well. Um, I think. The last question is quite relevant as well, and I think again it's something that will apply to to a lot of today's participants. So this uh, question is asking, you know, social media was highlighted as an efficient tool for comms, but at the same time, it's very congested right now, right? So everybody everybody has a message they're putting out there. I think um, what I personally noticed was the first week, uh, everybody and their mother had a webinar on, you know, how to work remotely from home, um, which is of course was. Uh, very very important and, and extremely relevant but um i think it was a bit a bit overdone maybe that's my personal opinion um so like one thing we did in in kmc we, we kind of pivoted a bit differently and we decided to focus on you know mental health and exercise so we're doing like a, a wellness wednesday theme where we have a life coach who um does live exercises or he will uh, have a pre-recorded video on on various things uh, just to kind of help people keep their mind and bodies active uh, whilst they're stuck at home, which is equally as important as having the correct ergonomic workspace. Um, so would you guys have any advice on how uh, brands could, I guess, 
stand out online when there is so much noise there? I can I can give some insights on that. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> aside from like the the social media, it's also important to be able to communicate to the like to the users who are going to your website, so or to your app in that case, right? So um, it's mm -hmm. important to be able to like um, talk to them and really also get their feedback of how the user experiences when it comes to to going to your brand or engaging with your brand. So like like. What we mentioned, um, social media is super congested, like Instagram, Facebook, and even LinkedIn. It's very effective, but super congested. So you need to open new channels to be able to talk to your customers. And one channel could always be your website because people would always go there to know what, yeah. what you are saying or what you want to convey to them. Okay, very good. How about you, Ken? Yeah, that's true. I mean... To be honest, one of the major tools in the brand that I'm handling right now, one of the major tools that we're using is um, the website. Um, there, we have a blog section there. So we populate mm -hmm. the blog section with really, really on point and very relevant content um, to the current situation of uh, our customers and our customers' customers right now. Um, the funny thing is that the content that we put out in the past few days did not necessarily talk about our brand, did not necessarily talk about our um, services, but it's more on what do the customers actually need during this time of crisis? What will keep mm -hmm. them busy? What will keep them mentally healthy, even if everyone is in lockdown? What else can they do to <laughs> optimize their, their, their free time, their, their, their um, being just at home. So these are the kinds of content that we put out in our website. And um, also to, to share, I agree with Amanda that the social media is actually very noisy right now. But what we observed and even Google Philippines um, in the recent um, workshop said that um, the open rate of emailers right now is very, very high. So we can probably mm. explore um, emailers and, you know, send out push um, relevant content to our customers. One, one example that I really like is the, 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 an emailer I got from the, one of the major banks here in the Philippines. Um, their CEO sent a long, long communication telling the story of how they fared during the first, um, the earlier part of the lockdown, how they uh, were vulnerable, but how they continued to learn across uh, the whole whole duration of this lockdown, and you know mm -hmm. they took that opportunity to 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 tell the customer that hey um, we, we we stumbled we fell, but then we got up and now we are ready to serve you more. So it builds a relationship, it builds credibility of the brand towards their customer. So with after receiving that email, actually I wanna um, do more business with that bank. So yeah. I, I guess. Using a, 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 another platform and telling a story and sending a mess, a timely message that will resonate to your customer will actually be very good for your brand and uh, the bottom line of your business. Yeah, and I guess I, I don't know which bank you're talking about or I haven't read the comms, but um, what was it that, that kind of struck a chord with you? Was it that it was maybe very sincere or was the transparency or they were kind of just, you know, just being honest with everyone? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, thank you guys for your questions. We'll hopefully get more of them as uh, we move along. Um, the next part, we're going to kind of move towards talking about the pivot. So um, I think that probably 2019, 2020, uh, more businesses than ever were talking about branding, especially in B2B, whilst it may not have been always top of the list. It, it was a trend that was growing. Um, you know, so as people now maybe are not focused as much um, on lead generation, right? So there's still a lot of uncertainty. So people may prefer to to kind of take a step back to, and see how things are going to pan out. So none of us have a, a magic ball, so we don't know the answer there. But like, how would you advise um, brands or companies out there who maybe have um, neglected their brand in the past? Where should they, where should they start or, or where should they kind of focus their efforts? Like what are their... What are their best strategies right now? 
Um, Kyra, would you like to hop on that one? Yes, uh, I think really during the time when our economy and businesses are its weakest, we should focus on where we are the strongest. So it may be, of course, you know, venturing into new tools or new avenues. That's also great. But we focus on where our audience are at already. See, for example, we can start collaborations or partnerships with brands. Yeah. That's also one way. I and think a lot of, a lot of uh, brands and companies are, are taking that line, right? So we've seen people uh, coming together, you know, whether they have kind of a symbiotic interest or there's something mm-hmm. there where they can really uh, help their, their end users as well. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Example, like Amanda mentioned Slack mm-hmm. as, as a good example. I think HubSpot have like mm-hmm. um, made more of their product offering free for for smaller mm-hmm. businesses as well, so they they can kind of adapt to digital uh, channels a lot a lot quicker. So like those are good examples. As well. Yeah, that's right. And more and more content creators or brand are you know doing IG live, offering free workshops, free lessons, free mm-hmm. tips on how to manage mental health or your stress, or even uh, just pushing tones of encouragement to people that hey, it's okay not to be productive. These are the solutions. Just you know, really maximizing partnership. So. In the end, the goal really is to build more connections and send mm-hmm. out more connections to the people. Just make them feel that, you know, yeah, we understand you. We understand what you're going through. And then in the future, who knows, it would, could possibly generate future leads for your businesses. You know, try, try out partnerships that you didn't even think of doing prior to this crisis. There are, I'm pretty sure you've read Google and Apple have partnered each other to provide solutions so that's also an interesting thing yeah, so it's, it's made everybody a lot yeah. nicer i think huh? exactly <laughs> so you see uh, yeah. <laughs> so now it has although it has put a lot of boundaries it has also you know cut the boundaries between brands so partnerships and collaborations are always always a good yeah good strategy to do right now yeah i mean kind of partnering up with somebody like whether it's you know a competitor type or mm-hmm. somebody who's more closely um, associate, associated with your business can also have huge benefits, right? So you're you're kind of bringing your brand to a whole new audience, um, which may not have got it before. So there's definitely uh, ways to kind of choose the right partnerships, of course, depending upon your your industry and, and who your customers are, and of course what what their needs are as well. Um, Amanda, what are your thoughts on that? So for for the pivot for 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 brands who maybe haven't. Um, given their brand or their, their messaging or, or whatever it may be, um, as much love uh, up until now. So what was your advice? Right. I, I think like like what you guys mentioned, right now there's like um, lots of brands who opened up their like services for free, gave free um, upgrades and all of those type of things. So now would be the best time to kind of like grab those opportunities and expand your ecosystem to make, mm-hmm. to really make your, like your brand um, stand out and make it, just be better and bigger, not only digitally, but like what Kara mentioned, even after the pandemic, right? So you would have like more network, more connections. So so at the end of the day, it will be like um, one community helping each other out. So yeah, I have to ask, obviously, because you're uh, the lead gen lady. Like, <laughs> are you seeing any, like, any trends for you? Like, so um, we all probably have experienced maybe it's like decline or maybe depending on your industry, it's been going up. Like what, what stood out to you? Like any surprises or, or anything we wouldn't expect? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So right now we are, we are pretty surprised with the brands that's coming to us. So usually mm-hmm. it would be like, um, number one, like the big brands who are focusing on e-commerce. But right now we are getting more from, say, the essentials. Like for example, pharmacies, groceries, and even like um, restaurant deliveries. We know that like restaurant deliveries like uh, in, in the U.S. or in any other countries, it's more like um, web-based and digital-based. But here in our country, we're still used to people calling. Or yeah, mm-hmm. some people are using Food Panda and Grab Food now. But uh, what, what we notice is that even like the, the local brands and like mid-players are, are opening up their digital and wants to service their people. Aside from that, they are also doing lots of like um, pledge to help frontliners as well. So I, I think like bottom line here is to really let people know that you're not here only for the revenue, but you still, you also care. You also care about the people around you. Very important. Um, what about you, Ken? Yeah, I, I guess I'll be the devil's advocate in this part of the conversation. 
Um, okay. Yeah, it's good that we build our brands and be magnanimous during this time of crisis and during this time of need. Mm-hmm. This business and this brands, we have to keep our eyes on the prize. I mean, um, we're not here for non-profit. We're here for profit, right? So yeah. even if we uh, do our branding or do our um, um, social responsibility projects, we still have to make sure that we, in the end, after this crisis, that our businesses survive, that mm-hmm. our brands survive. I mean, we still need to do leads generation. We still need to do um, prospecting and making sure that we have um, a good line of um, potential customers down our pipeline so that when the world starts to open up again, I mean, with all the brand recall, all the brand love that we've created along this um, uh, crisis time, we will be able to reap the benefit and we will be able to reap the profit that, hey, uh, if I'm the customer, I remember you doing good to me. Right. And now that I'm willing to pay, I, I will only be willing to pay to someone who was nice to me and to someone who I remember mm-hmm. who did me a favor during the time of need. So, I mean, as a brand, I will, I, I need, we need to, Remember that at the end of the day, we still need to make profit. We still need to make a business for us to survive. Yeah, for sure. I think, like for in our industry, obviously it's very competitive. Um, so I guess the long-term game is always lead generation. But, but what you're kind of saying is like achieving that uplift. So maybe now is not the time where they'll they'll come and they'll physically engage you, but they will remember how you reacted or or how you responded during this time. So it's probably an important. Um, an important point to take away. So even if you're you're not going to attract more leads or ideally customers at this moment in time, your current actions could still uh, give you that uplift. You know, maybe if it's four to six months uh, time down the down the road. That's right. Um, okay, I think um, we're all a lot more familiar now with webinars and. Than what we were a few weeks ago. <laughs> it's, it's been one of the positive things maybe to come from from COVID for for us marketers. We've we've had no uh, excuse not to embrace them, um, and it's been great to see all the content that's coming out for sure. Um, but again, there's a lot of noise, so I'd be interested to hear what you guys would advise for brands in terms of like which channels they should they should take their their message to, um, whether it's social media, online, um, if you have any particular tools that you're using or, or tools you're aware of which could help our audience members, that would be really good to, to highlight as well. So Amanda, would you like to go on that one? Yeah, sure. So um, of course, I would want to highlight um, Insider, our solution. So what we actually do is we, we optimize the engagement on your website. So since we were discussing um, that, that uh, social media is pretty noisy right now and congested. So it's time for you to really optimize the engagement on your website. And that's what we do as a solution. Yeah, I think probably people, like if people are going to your website, there's always mm-hmm. that element of intent, right? So Correct. they're probably that's a bit right. more qualified than somebody who's scrolling through uh, LinkedIn or Facebook exactly. or whatever the, the platform is. And you know, like people, people on Facebook are distracted people. So um, you don't want to engage with people who are distracted, especially if you're a, if you're a brand who wants to like, um, get business from them. So like what yeah. you mentioned, Rich, when they go to your website, there's an intention and there's a need. So you as a brand, it's important for you to be able to address that in the right way and in the right channel. Yeah. And what do you think is the right way? Like I know you mentioned um, kind of earlier on about you know, the right message. And, mm-hmm. but like you think it's, like, should I be blogging or should I be doing videos or should I be doing, um, you know, should I just kind of leave things the way they are and wait a bit longer? Like, what's your, what's your expert opinion on that? Right. I think the beauty of having a tool is that um, all your decisions will be data driven. So when you mm-hmm. have a tool in place, you'll know like um, which segments would prefer a blog, which segment would prefer a, like an email communication and which segment would prefer, say, web push or Viber message or a WhatsApp message. So that's the beauty of having solutions because um, everything is AI and data driven. You'll be able mm-hmm. to, to communicate very well without um, annoying or irking your audience during yeah. this sensitive time. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's very, uh, very true. How about you, Tara? What, what are you thinking? Yeah, I agree. Also, it is a good opportunity or a good time to maximize the use of LinkedIn because it's a very credible source, especially for 
news on COVID and news on how the marketers and businesses can strategize and plan short-term, long-term, during, during and post-crisis. Also, going back to what I mentioned about collaborations and partnership, it would be really um, useful for brands to just rise up above the noise, to go straight directly to their communities. So I would also like to say that the use of IG and Facebook Live also also very strong because then it's an interactive tool to communicate mm-hmm. with your audience because it's you know real time and live so you can also see their feedbacks real time what they are asking what yeah, it's asking. much more engaging i think yes like, so. exactly and um, then it's more because when you go to when you go to your say for example a content creator or a key opinion leader with a community that that's that's your market you penetrate within the noise right so you still send your message across through the noise it's go straight to your communities so yeah i recall make use of the free tools available to you for your brand so that's facebook live and ig live what's your okay yeah i was gonna ask what's your uh what's your number one free tools but you've already highlighted them um ken what are your thoughts um i know you've already kind of mentioned having having the right message but what's the what's the right channel yeah, um, I, just before we went live, I was checking with my team um, the performance of the content that we've put out over the past two weeks. And mm-hmm. what was amazing was that um, one of the highest um, read content that we put out was that something that we didn't actually cross post our social assets. <laughs> and we were, we were so confused. Why did this happen? We didn't even yeah. cross post this. And then it gathered a lot of, of, of traction online. And again, I think uh, it goes back to the principle of, you know, sending the right message. And so regardless of what platform you use, people will still um, gravitate towards it. I mean... Can I ask what was the, what was the, the, what, right was the what was the piece of content that you're referring to? If you want to let us in, you can cross plug it now. It was totally not about our product because our product is about delivery service. And that content mm-hmm. was about um, the gyms around you. So okay. we actually aggregated a websites of different um, gyms that give out free in-house, I mean, free yeah. at-home exercise um, routines. And so it actually clicked to, to, to more people and then they grew, uh, that article grew more traffic to our website more than anything else, more than our, uh, you know, the usual business content. So, the, I mean, that's it. I mean, the message is really important. What is relevant to your market, that will pull. But to your question, what, what, what medium do you think would be more effective right now? I would say go somewhere where there is no, um, there is no clutter. There is no so much noise that can you know, um, distract your customers from, from, from your key message. In, in our conversation earlier this morning, what I mentioned was that I noticed that pre-COVID, people were so fond of listening to podcasts. But mm. when the lockdown came in, I mean, people rushed to lives, pe- people rushed to Facebook Live, to mm-hmm. Zoom conferencing and all that. And there suddenly, the field of podcasting was so quiet. I mean, do you even hear someone promoting his podcast? No, um, not at all, actually. <laughs> exactly. So maybe it's also a good space where you don't have uh, a lot of noise coming in there. You can take advantage of, of, of the, the law. And, you know, I mean, to me, if you just promote it, I mean, use cross posts in, in different social assets, you can still bring in uh, the right traffic to your podcast and you can communicate your message in your podcast. So to me, it's, it's one of the effective um, platforms right now. Yeah, that's an excellent point as well, I think, for, for today's listeners so far you had maybe not expected that post to, to outperform a lot of your other content, which is probably like A, more related to your service and B, more targeted to your, your potential clients or prospects. But I think finding, you know, a bit of differentiation and, and being able to offer that to people is, is really, uh, it's adding value right now. Like it gives brand value because um, that's the potential where you have to achieve the up, uplift in, in that like four to six months. So, so that's good. We'll have lots more blogs on gyms now after this from, from all of our uh, attendees. <laughs> That's right. Um, 
Very good. Um, I think now we're going to do another poll, if uh, we can get that up on the screen, please. Um, yeah, so we'll do the poll, and then there's also being a, lot, a few questions coming in, so, so we'll get to some of those as well, as quickly as we can, because we, we have about another uh, 10 to 12 minutes. So why don't we begin the poll now? We'll give you uh, 15 seconds to vote, and then we'll see what the results are. One word answer from each of our panelists. Where have you guys been focusing your effort? Yeah, I like that. Mia Morales uh, just dropped in with a comment that um, they've been promoting their people, which I think is hugely important right now. Um, an extension of any brand, I think, is their people. And that's probably one of the best investments you can, you can make right now. Um, at KMC, we've been talking a lot about our people these past couple of weeks. We've actually um, also been talking about our culture. So we've used this as an opportunity to really prioritize looking after our own employees, but also then I guess putting a bit more structure and framework around it so we've been developing um, our employer brand and, and asking ourselves what does it mean to 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 work to work at KMC or be a part of our community so um, we're looking forward to launching some some new employer branding very soon um, do we have the results part of the, the poll I must agree with you Rich I mean yeah. some of the amazing some of the amazing people that I ever met were, uh, I, I met in KMC. <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of amazing people uh, in KMC all over. Um, I'm just waiting for Pat if she's gonna, Pat is uh, the lady who's done all the work today. I'm just waiting for her to flash the results. Um, okay, so the highest percentage has actually come in for positioning for lead generation. That's 36.2%. Yeah. Um, so Ken, that probably goes back to your point. So, you know, probably whilst uh, leads might be slower than ever, they're probably a lot more crucial right now than ever at the same time. So um, again, putting out that right message and, and taking that a right, right approach now could have that long-term effect. Um, and then the second most uh, popular answer has been the investing in our people. So uh, I think we all agree that's that's very important because we had discussed it discussed it earlier. So that had 32%. And then um, the third ranked answer was um, same as everyone else. We've been doing webinars. I think yeah, like I said, we have all got our webinars. And then um, the last ranked one with 13.8% was. Uh, some people haven't adjusted, adjusted anything. So um, why don't we pick it up there? I guess I'd be interested to know like why people haven't adjusted. Maybe it's not affected their, their business as much. Um, but what, what do you guys think about the results? So the, the first answer, the first rank answer was um, positioning for lead check. Cara? Yeah, similarly to what Ken has mentioned earlier, it's really, you know, we are still doing business because we do want to profit and we do have to take care of our employees who have family to feed and so on and so forth. So mm. generation in terms of it's, it's what you can make use after the crisis, right? It's already a potential client. It's already potential mm -hmm. business. So more and more brands and companies are strategizing on how to effectively without overstepping boundaries to you know, generate leads from potential clients. Yeah, and, so like being aware, but not, not being, I guess, as yeah. aggressive, but still kind of exactly. making a bit of noise so that people know that, that you're still kind of, you're still here, you're still ready yeah. to service them. Yeah. 
That's right. And uh, to the top two result, I totally agree with it because just this week we had a town hall where our CEO has projected uh, transparency, like total transparency to us. So he shared our situation, what's happening, and the projected long-term results from the crisis, which, you know, you'd think that with the numbers would be devastated, but as it is, it made us, it boosts our morale, you know, it made us want to work better, harder, you know, to create yeah. solutions. It, it really does build a community, yeah. like times of crisis really do help, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, Amanda or Ken, do you guys have any comments to, to add there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just, just to add to what Kara mentioned, uh, like, like what they said, of course, this is still business and we still need revenue. So probably that's why that's the highest um, positioning for leads generation. And of course, if your solution or if your product is something that can be beneficial to the ones that you're working with or to the people around you, then uh, for go for it, right? Just just do what you have to do so that people will know that there are solutions or there are things that could that could possibly help them during this season and even right after. But yeah, like like what you guys were saying earlier, people would still be the most important asset. Because after everything, it would still be them who will yeah. who will be with you and make sure that, you know, your brand is still successful and you're communicating well. And those are still the same people who will process the leaves that came in from the efforts that you're doing right now. So like in just just to share a bit, like in an in insider, like our founders are doing like a zero layoff policy. So even if it's like um a very special time or crucial time right now, they're mm -hmm. they're very much willing to sacrifice like um their revenue and their salaries just to keep everyone in. And that gives a very good sense of like um so solidarity and pride for, yeah. for for the people, for the team members. So and it encourages, um, I guess, like a people first approach really encourages those, those people then to like, they because they are an extension of the brand already, but maybe now they're more committed to uh, supporting it. And, you know, referrals are always great as well. So I think you can apply that to your employees. You can apply it to also your customers, of course, as well. That's right. How about you, Ken? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe that people are very, very important in this um, equation. Um, when, I, when I speak about people, I talk about um, dealing with both your internal and external people. Um, internally, of course, you have to take care of the people who under your employment and the people you're working with because they're the ones who will stick with you through thick and thin. And mm -hmm. they are the ones who will walk with you towards the journey of recovery. And um, when I talk about people externally, you also have to talk to, to, to your customers and your stakeholders as humans. Don't talk to them like you're sounding like a brand, you know, <laughs> babbling, babbling a, a, a brochure or a campaign that will turn <laughs> them off. I mean, during this time of crisis, people are very, very emotionally charged. So they, 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 they will appreciate it if you talk to them like another human being. Um, yeah. Just quickly, before I appear over time probably, but just quickly on, on the last um, portion of, of the survey where the, the, wherein some people would say they still haven't um, con reconsidered their marketing campaign. I mean, I yeah. don't want to judge them. Totally no, for high. sure. Maybe okay. they're, taking, they're taking time and, and, and figuring out what's happening in the market. Everyone's confused. No one actually knows what's going to happen in the next several months. So, I mean, it's fine. Just stop, look, and listen. And only then when you're able to analyze what's happening and, you know, go back to your data and find out um, through insighting what would be the best step, then that's the only right time for you to actually do your marketing program or you do a, a, an improved marketing program. Of course, yeah. That's a, that's a nice way to wrap up for you, Ken, because it kind of ties back into your very first point as well. Um, Karen, Amanda, just conscious of time, so do you guys have any last minute tips or um, insights to share with the audience and kind of, um, I guess, what comes next? And I think it's important to remember that even though it's very uncertain now, there's still, um, there's still always opportunities. Uh, you just need to know how to approach them, and um, I guess what what are the most relevant ones to, to your brand and your industry. So mm -hmm. maybe you guys would have some some last pieces of advice to offer. 
Right. So um, let me go first. This will be very quick. So right now we are in an era that no one has ever been in before. So it's really important to use the tools that are available for all of us to, to kind of like know like A-B testing solutions, segmentation, optimization, all of those type of things mm -hmm. in order for us to be able to, you know, adapt to the new norm and be able to give the same user experience, if not the same, probably even better user experience to our, to our users. So maximize solutions and use um, data, use analytics in order to engage better to your audience. Yes, definitely. Um, one last question for you, Amanda. What do you think is the, the best metric for, for measuring brand right now? Because that's something that people always struggle with, right? Like, it's always a question. It's, it's a lot more black and white when it comes to, like, website traffic or lead conversion. But would you, would you, would you have any uh, advice on what the number one metric people should, should measure right now and how that uh, impacts their brand? Right. So um, based from our experience, it's still conversion rate. That's still the highest. Like, mm -hmm. for example, how like uplift, revenue uplift and those type of things. But it still depends on your industry because some industries would focus on leads generation. Some industries would focus on traffic. So there are still lots of things. Some, some industries actually focus on CSAT and net promoter score. So there are lots of um, KPIs. And again, going back, if you have a solution and that's data driven, you will know how to hit all of those in the best way possible. Exactly. Uh, couldn't agree more. Um, and then Kara, last word goes to you. So if you want to give us your insights, please. Yeah, just to build on what everyone has already said, it's really just remember to be transparent. You know, don't be afraid to take calculated risk if you really think that it would strongly contribute, most especially to your market's need. And do mm -hmm. not try to go back to the normal that we were used to prior to crisis. It's, you know, taking in all the challenges, learnings, and pains of your brands, then move mm -hmm. forward to your strategies. Yeah, so I guess being aware and then pivoting, um, I guess, into what you feel is, is the best approach or, or what works best for your brand. Um, of course, I think always monitoring competitors and their actions and those always give some, some good insights too. Um, so definitely a, a data-driven brand approach is probably uh, a good strategy for the next couple of months and, and with a lot of assessment and reconfiguring as needed. Um, okay, I think we're actually just a bit over time. So I would like to thank you all for for joining, first of all, um, our attendees who are, who are listening at home. I hope you all have an exciting weekend planned. Um, and then I would like to thank um, our panelists. Thank you guys so much for joining. I really enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, maybe we could do something like this again, but like um, more of a live uh, version where we, we can actually sit together and chat. Um, and lastly, then I'd just like to thank the team for all their efforts in putting this together and all the other webinars that we've been doing. Um, I guess we will, we will issue a copy of the recording after the presentation as well. And you can feel free to reach out, I'm sure, to any of the, the panelists via LinkedIn or email if you have questions or if you have anything that you could uh, use their help with. That's fair to say, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. thank you, Rich. Thank you, KMT. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Stay safe, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.